What's going on everybody and welcome to Drew and Chase Side by Side. We are coming to you from San Diego, California. I'm Drew. And I'm Chase. And this is a musical podcast where we randomly select a year and we each choose an album from that year and we put them up side by side. We see if there's any similarities, any differences, what we like, dislike, any interesting facts or connections between the artists. So Chase, let's get us started. So... The two albums we picked are from the year 2011, um, with the first one being Lasers by um, Chicago rapper Lupe Fiasco, and that came out in March of 2011. And then the other one coming out in September of 2011 being AJJ's fourth album, um, Knife Man. And they're from uh, Arizona, Arizona, California, Arizona. forget what city but yeah so let's jump in yeah so um let's get into lasers so that was lupe fiasco's third studio album and um i thought this was a pretty strong album all the way through i thought it started out pretty strong and then um one of my favorite songs on the album happened to be the second song words i never said um but uh, that was that was so I thought that was a strong start. But um, what I didn't like, a couple of the songs that I didn't like were um, I I don't want to care right now. Um, what was it? I just uh, it just it just didn't do much to me. I just think it was kind of the uh, the beat was a little all over the place and uh, just not really my style so that was one of the ones that it was strong like i said the whole album i felt was pretty strong but there was a couple ones that just weren't for me and another one was kind of out of my head and then another one was a break the chain yeah i kind of agree with you those were all the ones that kind of fell the most flat for me yeah um but yeah letting go the opening track and then yeah words i never said uh, when I first heard words I never said, I was like, oh, yeah, Drew definitely will like this. Like, <laughs> yeah. Drew definitely likes this. Uh, just, yeah, I mean, obviously, he's he's questioning the truth and, like, or what is portrayed as the truth and all that stuff. I just, the only problem I had with that was I just don't think the hook fit with the song because I think the hook almost sounds more like, like, talking about love or, like, a relationship, you know, and what he's talking about, I mean... I guess it's telling the truth and I guess it kind of has that, but I just felt like the hook would have like, like it, it felt more like it was like geared towards somebody that was like either passed on or like gone. So I just, I don't know. I just didn't feel like I felt like, and my opinion of the record, I think that kind of happens throughout it a couple times. I feel like there are pieces pieced together and it, the songs don't like, flow as strongly as they could i like so so there to that note doing some research there was a big battle between i believe it was atlantic records and and lupe during this time this album was shelved for i believe three years and there was just this constant battle and they forced him to kind of do certain songs and create this album which had a more mainstream feel and i feel like that's kind of why some of the songs didn't resonate with me it kind of had that almost house music feel that electronic music feel which i think was kind of big at that time or at least getting really big and popping at that time so that's kind of why i didn't resonate with some of these songs but um, yeah definitely it definitely has that like club vibe yeah like very i think that's probably my biggest complaint about the record yeah was the production of it it sounded so like over the top to the point where it like almost distracted at times and, from yes, like 100 percent. and i think he lyrics. would even say that himself like i don't think he right. really enjoys this album i think it's a strong album just based on Lyrical the content, content. exactly yeah but production wise i i think he would agree yeah. with you this was he would like i said he was forced to do some song so that's probably what you're saying why some of it feels pieced together and yeah. doesn't really flow naturally and yeah for for him to i think i i watched an interview with him talking about this album and he said like of the 
however many tracks he went in to record this album with, only five were what Atlantic approved of, yeah. essentially. Yeah. So it's like, not only was he sitting on the, these same five songs for three years. So long, yeah. And so then you get bored with them. So then you do maybe want to change things up, try something new. Yeah. And then by the time you've you've gotten so far away from what you came in with that it's like, whatever, I'm just done with this song. Let's just get this thing finished and get it out there. Yeah. And not not that the album sounds rushed by any means, because obviously it took a long time. Yeah, exactly. But it, it just like, yeah, it, it lacks something in the production that like it is a real bummer because I think there are a lot of great like lyrical moments and his message throughout the record is like great. Like, I, I mean, I, I'm not really familiar with, I guess he's considered conscious rap or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm not really like too familiar with a lot of artists in that kind yeah. of uh, genre, but it, it, he has a message and he's Definitely. delivering it and he's staying true to that. And I think that it through all of what we're saying is like, kind of like the negative shines through the album, which is like exactly. so important. Yeah, it really is. So, um, a few of the ones that I did like, like I I had mentioned, Words I Never Said, I thought was a pretty strong one. Just, uh, yeah, talking about topics that are kind of hard to talk about and kind of they don't really want you to talk about the truth and um, how you kind of get censored when you do talk about it. And I think that was kind of a theme throughout some of the uh, songs as well, that kind of uh, um, that state run radio that kind of talks about that too that's one yeah, of my a, a and... real good one i i like that one it kind of had a more of a rock feel again mm -hmm. i think it kind of was trying to appeal for that radio sound and that yeah. kind of vibe but i i liked it and um yeah he was talking about how we just kind of take things for truth as they're presented from yeah. who the media or, you know, whoever we're getting our information from, we're just kind of taking it and running with it that way. So I like that one, words I never said. Yeah, and I think on that song, yeah, like the fact that he, you know, is this like uh, uh, black rapper, very like conscious, it, you hear it throughout the album, and then for him to be like, like, I didn't vote for Obama. Yeah, like, yeah. He, he's calling everyone out in that yeah. last part, which I just thought was, like, interesting and cool because he's like, this is, like, I'm just going to be genuine to myself. I'm going to say how I feel and what I believe, and I'm going to get it on the record, and I think that's important. And um, that is interesting that you bring that up because he's from where Obama was uh, from, yeah. Chicago, and, you know, so. Gotcha, yeah. Yeah, so it's, I mean, yeah, that I thought that one was really good. I thought the next track, Till I Get There, I... That was the one, there's a couple on here, but that was one of the ones I really liked the chorus and he's singing it. So I think that kind of has something to do with it. I think a lot of the features is like kind of, I guess, where I get a little, I guess like not as excited, but yeah. like he's like, it is what it is. It's how it's going to be. Like he, I, I just, I like the simplicity of that chorus a lot and yeah. the verses are like, decent like not i don't think his strongest rapping on the album but i think that course was definitely something to highlight and i sure. think this was this was a song where he was kind of telling his story about his struggle with the label yeah and i think that's kind of what he was getting at with that one um yeah i like that one as well and then um another one that stood out big for me was beautiful lasers two ways um, it just had an interesting feel and vibe to it. Um, I thought it had a pretty good hook to start it out. And then um, it, it seemed like a side that we don't necessarily see from Lupe Fiasco too often. It showed more of a darker thoughts and kind of a more vulnerable side to him where he's dealing with some of these negative thoughts and heartbreak and wanting to give up on life and that type of thing and i relate to that dealing with some of those thoughts as well so this one kind of uh you know stood out to me in a big way yeah definitely and the one before that i think this song kind of it's like in clusters like like little groups of two like good two good songs kind of next to each other but the show goes on i really like the modest mouse um sample yeah yeah that that one had on. a really good feel to it yeah, yeah it's the it's it's the song float on by Mad modest mouth that mouse that he's uh working into his and yeah. i i just i like i like how that one fit in in the album um 
it it didn't sound like like he made it his own still like it's not just the same chorus that modest mouse used like he adjusted it to make it his own and it fits really well with his song um and then the song coming up i did like just because it was like kind of like uh you know talking to his sister kind of thing and like kind of like for for the women and stuff right mm-hmm. and just like kind of like uh, uh, i think in the interview i watched she was like yeah you know i always got to throw a song for the for the women out there yeah. you know like kind of like an empowering women song like yeah you know you don't just like you can be yourself and like i, I want to make you feel like that like by doing a song for you and like giving you everything you want like it, he says like not that you're hard to impress, but something about like just what you expect from mm-hmm. like a relationship or what what a guy's like trying to like persuade you or whatever. Like, yeah, just like be like confident in who you are, which I just I like that message for definitely. Sure. And then I mean, you got you gotta give a shout out to All Black Everything. I mean, that's a that's a pretty powerful song. Just kind of talking about um, you know what if. What if uh, African Americans were never enslaved and just kind of uh, having a revisionist history type of thing and kind of looking at it from that point of view? So, you know, pretty strong message, pretty strong song in that one. Yeah, definitely. That was probably my favorite song on the album. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, just he uses a lot of like actually like accurate like historical names and yeah. stuff like that. And he just tells it uh, like, in just like a really cool way where it's like yeah he really does paint a good picture of like what it could have been like or what yeah. it like and obviously it's a dream or like a re- false reality dream that he's telling but, but also i like how he at the end of that he was like yeah there's nothing we can do about the past but we can change our future yeah and- all we can do is try and uh better everyone around us and that's a universal message i mean i know he's talking about it in the context of that but mm-hmm. it's a universal message yeah exactly you know? so um, let me just tell you a quick story um in 2007 kanye west had a concert in san diego um and i went with the buddy and my dad took us and uh never heard about this guy before and uh he was definitely on the come up and lupe fiasco was the opener came out did like a couple of songs and uh it's right when kick push was kind of starting to blow up and bubbling and then right after that boom he was all over the place so that was a that was a pretty interesting thing to kind of see because i had no idea who he was and then just randomly seeing an opener and then kind of seeing the success from there and then um in uh when was it 2015 june 10th and then June 15th, I went and saw him back to back in Santa Ana at the observatory and then San, uh, San Diego at the observatory. Um, he was doing a tour for one of his albums. But the main reason I went was because uh, Charles Hamilton was there. And that's kind of one of my favorite artists. But um, seeing that connection, seeing the Kanye West connection, Charles has a connection with Kanye West we just did the Kanye West yeah. episode a couple weeks well, yeah, back Chicago so, and so, the Chicago yeah. thing so um yeah I thought uh you know just wanted to bring that up Lupe kind of kills it on the performance wise and uh yeah yeah last little note for me um yeah I I, I thought the album like I remember the song kick push mm-hmm. um and it was funny when I started this semester in class my uh, professor had asked he was like does anyone know Lupe Fiasco in here? <laughs> and the class, like, uh, no one raised their hand. I was like, I remember Kick Push, yeah. but I'm, I, I haven't followed his career or yeah. anything. And so for them to, to us to do for us to do this, like a couple months, yeah. Now I was like, I was actually kind of excited when you chose this, yeah. And like I said, I you know I have my opinions about the record, the production, and all that and yeah. stuff. But like like I said, his lyrical content is that's great. what he's known for is great and so that's yeah it makes me for. like definitely like excited to check out more of his stuff and, and uh, when you realize there was that struggle between the label, label and yeah, it all makes sense it all sure. makes sense yeah so. yeah that's it's unfortunate because i think that happens way too much when a artist wants to be an artist mm-hmm. exactly and exactly that's, that's very unfortunate yeah so yeah we'll jump into um 
AJJ, formerly Andrew Jackson Jihad, uh, Knife Man. And uh, it's it's an interesting album. It's a full punk, but sometimes it's just a punk. It's yeah. like there's punk songs. Like I yeah. think they blend that their sound really well. Sometimes it's acoustic, just like uh, whatever. And then sometimes it's like thrashers like and mm-hmm. stuff. And um, yeah, I think the first two songs kind of give you that uh, total vibe. You know, you start with the Michael Jordan of drunk driving. And mm. it's uh, like a stupid song kind of he's just saying like i'm the best at doing the worst thing possible mm. and so it is what it is and then this the next song the g- i did find it interesting though i don't know if you took notice the song length oh no. 23 seconds jordan's number yeah 23 that's, that's really interesting yeah i i almost think that that was done on purpose uh, if not i noticed it and but and it's just one of those coincidences uh, but yeah, uh, i'm sure it was done intentionally yeah they're like it's funny because they're they are very like they, like their content their lyrical content they talk about a lot of shitty things a lot of like yeah, fucked up stuff that. yeah and like you almost think that that that's who they are but it's just almost more like a reflection of society because i've watched interviews with uh the lead singer sean bonnet and he's like the most down-to-earth nice humble guy so he's not like the michael jordan of no the- no oh, i okay. think he's reflecting society because gotcha. i'm like i hate this <laughs> yeah. but you're like good thing it's only 23 seconds yeah. i can get through it a couple times. yeah no i mean honestly i didn't like the first few songs to start out the album um yeah, Gift of the Magi, that one I don't really get. Like, yeah. it's, it's punk. So that's why I say in the first exactly. two songs kind of give you that, like, okay, it's going to be kind of acoustic, mm-hmm. and then it's going to kind of be punk. Like, yeah. And so I think that kind of gives the good intro, but those two songs I don't think are the highlight of the record by any means. No, and then, I mean, yeah, like I said, the first few, then American Tune. Love it. I hated it. <laughs> I, I feel like you through this album just for this song um. no no because there's some other great songs on it really like this album really does get into a lot of like you know depression and, and yeah and like definitely real stuff that oh, i think yeah. like but no american tune is a great song and i think it almost relates to all black everything as like a reverse <sighs> to that because he's being extremely sarcastic and saying like it's it's all about white privilege and that is so much more relevant now but obviously it was still a thing in 2011 and it, it I just don't like white privilege or that guilt mentality and I feel like there's more to society than race and I think that's a bigger conversation mm-hmm. but um yeah, so that's why I mean, I'm saying. It's not just race, though. He's going into women. He's he's going into everything in that song like women yeah. like women getting paid less, the wage gap. Like he's going into again. A lot of it's stuff. a bigger conversation. Yeah, for it's sure. It's a bigger conversation. Yeah. So um, that was those were the ones that I didn't necessarily like. Um, that kind of uh stood out to me. But overall, I thought it was a pretty strong album. Like it had its ups and downs, its waves, and uh, different kind of feeling and sounds. Like you said, it had its folky kind of acoustic sound, but then also kind of threw on that punk kind of thrasher vibe yeah for sure and so yeah it's like after american tune that's kind of when i think it really gets into like almost the heart of the album really like a reflection of kind of like the core of it because like the song backpack's interesting because it's like you know he's talking about like a loved one that died or something yeah and that like was, it, it's yeah. kind of like and i think i think that's sort of a theme of the album is like this like tragedy with like the devil you know he references the like devil and god Mm -hmm. throughout the record kind of a lot like definitely like it's kind of this like uh almost like shakespearean kind of like like tragedy devil god like good and evil sort of thing and um not that we'll go through every song but distance it it was another punk one just Mm -hmm. like kind of thrashing punk song but very much about a breakup yeah about, you know depression and he's just yeah like, that that's one that i liked a lot that's kind like, of i drank and jerked off you know like yeah after you go through just a, just yeah. doing what is barely needed to survive yeah fed when, the dog when i had to like yeah. most people don't considering feeding their pet like a chore but when you're that far in sometimes every little thing can be and even though it's like almost funny and that's what i was kind of saying like they put things in such a way where it's like it comes off funny, but like when you really look at it, it's kind of dark. It's like oh, that's what yeah. I was like, 
yeah that's why it's like oh i didn't think this one was funny i i yeah. related to it you know as someone like i said who kind of struggles with that kind of thought process um yeah this one stood out in a positive way for sure just to kind of have the courage to kind of put those thoughts out there yeah exactly yeah. And then another one I really liked was No One. He's obviously talking about like the homeless community. Yeah, that was another one that like, I calling it the people too. pound. Like yeah, like yeah. such like not that that's even like that smart, but just like he's putting things in a way like that. It's just like it's so in your face, hard on your sleeve, and it's like, but it's not just like oh, it's like a homeless person. Like you, mm -hmm. like by saying they're no ones, like that's kind of how society looks at like homeless people sometimes. And yeah, it's like, exactly. And it, it, I just really like the way he incorporates that. Yeah, I thought this was a powerful song and a, a pretty important song that uh, should be listened to for sure. And then same thing with, uh, I think there's one song and then the next one, Zombie by the Cranberries by Andrew Jackson. Yeah, what is that title? <laughs> I have no idea. I, mean, I know that song, Zombie by the Cranberries, but I don't really get why they said by whatever. Yeah, weird. But, but like, again, that one's kind of talking about, like, uh, you know, homeless social thing where he's like, you know, if I had a cigarette for every time a perfect stranger asked me for a cigarette. Uh huh. Like, any, and like, he's talking about the spare change, and then he's talking about, like, you know, going to the shelter, and then they feed you, like, like shitty five dollar hot and ready pizzas feed mm -hmm. you high fructose corn syrup yeah and then like they feel good about it like when it's like they are did you their really part yeah are you really helping this person or are you just like yeah you're giving them some sort of nourishment mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh it's still like uh i don't know and then i like how he ends it because he's like is is this a way to justify like such a lousy attempt at mm -hmm. like trying to help someone you know yeah I mean, I like the next song, People 2, 2, Still People In. Yeah, great one. Yeah, uh, Again with these titles, man. But, um, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, whole album has, like, uh, some interesting titles. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. And, uh, yeah, I like this, like, a more of a raw, vulnerable sound and feel to this one, touching on, like, hard-to-talk-about topics, um, talking about bad things that have been seen and yeah uh, yeah again talking about like mental health and depression and stuff like that where it's like you know like he says it you can never go too far like like look at the things i've seen like there's there's always like you know the next step down until essentially death you mm -hmm. know like but yeah i think like i think it's the reality they really do like uh shine it like on that like kind of like subculture not a subculture but like the kind of like outskirts of society outskirts of life with the homeless with the yeah. like um yeah stuff like that the outcasts or yeah yeah and then and then the album closes out with the two bird tracks free bird and and those are both great songs i too. like See, that's what I said. I didn't like the first few songs, but then I loved how it ended. I yeah. loved those last two songs. And um, yeah, he, he. I like how he ties like um, uh, Big Bird to one of the earlier songs where it's like, it's harder to be yourself than it is to be anybody else. Mm -hmm. And and then I just, I think that's like a very true line because sometimes it's easier to just fake your way through life and stuff yeah. rather than just being genuine and being honest with yourself. Like, this is who I want to be kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so, but then being yourself, like also you can have some fucked up thoughts and you can be like looked at wrong. You know, I think exactly. in the other song he mentions that in a different one, he's, he mentions like, he's like, I'm afraid what people might think, like. They might think I'm a pervert or something. Yeah. He says something like that. Yeah. And it's just like, these are all things I think like a lot of people think about, but then they, they just try and hide it or try and like cover themselves up with like how they really feel and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. And again, with Big Bird, uh, I just really like how he was able to kind of express these fears and, you know, things that he struggles with. Yeah. And I'm uh, afraid my dog won't love me. Man. I've been there. That's what I'm saying. Some of these songs that I've... Some of the lyrics just hit so hard. And it's, you know, mainly dealing with those types of yeah. situations. And, uh, yeah. So, this album, to me, was kind of hit or miss. But when it hit, it hit really good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like when you... <laughs> 
when you first said that about American Tune, it was like, no, like, when you listen to the whole album, like, I, I was like, and like, when, when we're picking these albums, I'm not, I'm trying to pick an album that like, I like, that I want to dive more into. Yeah. Not really like, oh, what can I do to sabotage <laughs> him or, or yeah. what, like, you know, but, you know, personal politics aside yeah. or whatever, you know. Um, no, I didn't think that really, but yeah. um, it was yeah. just funny. I was like, oh, this is a standout one. And it's, uh, <laughs> We're going to disagree on this one. <laughs> yeah, before we get into if we saw any similarities or whatever, um, I was supposed to see them, like, the week everything shut down. Oh, really? Yeah, they were playing Soma on oh, like, wow. Wednesday or Thursday, and uh, it was the Friday or whatever before that, like... I stopped working and everything kind of shut down by that following Monday. Jeez. And then I was supposed to go with a couple buddies. And then like, yeah, on Monday I looked and they had announced that they postponed the had, tour or whatever and had stuff. To shut so, it down. And they had just released a new album. Um, so I was like really excited to see them and stuff. And uh, I think uh, my buddy that I was supposed to go with still bought the tickets and he's still holding on to them. So whenever the rescheduled dates are, Hopefully go check them out and yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, because I haven't seen them. And gotcha. Yeah, I kind of I kind of fell into them a little bit later. Uh huh. Especially like the folk punk thing, you know. Like I I liked some of the different stuff early on, but like I think they're kind of one of the pinnacle folk um, punk kind of artists for sure. So. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have a unique sound. And I I don't know. If I I I'll, I can show you this song like after, but. This this was a long time ago when uh, uh, your buddy Jesse was living there. Uh -huh. He showed us a song by AJ. Yeah. yeah. What and was it called again? I I, I love you. Uh huh. Or I think it's called that. But yeah, and it's that's a fucked up song too. Yeah. Uh, but I just remember like that was my first like introduction introduction to them, and it was like a couple years later that I even like listened to a record by them. And I was like, oh, this is that group. That guy. Yeah. 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 And so it was just kind of a weird little connection to there. Yeah. That's funny. Um, yeah. So I, I like the album. Um, I I did think it was pretty interesting that there was kind of like a couple tributes to like other songs. Like yeah. When the Saints Go Marching In, yeah. uh, Where the Kids in America, yeah. uh, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, do you know what that was about or was that was just i'm not sure yeah i i i liked i thought it was interesting though that was just something that kind of stood out to me yeah it's it, yeah it's funny sometimes like you'll just be doing like you know playing a song and you just get like oh this sounds like this song like let me just throw a little quick interlude yeah to like acknowledge that like i hear it too kind of thing gotcha so, but but yeah like um when the Saints Go Marching On, oh, it's just a traditional old school folk song. So, yeah. You know, it's just yeah. Kinda, yeah, it's funny that it was thrown in there. Yeah. So was there anything else? The only thing I want to say is, so like I like like we were saying kind of about American Tune, and like I think there is some like similarities in the the two albums being like kind of like, um, like socially and politically like in the same direction even though they're coming from two different ways mm -hmm. i think there is a similar message in there um yeah 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 and and like i like the fact that you know lupe fiasco name drops obama saying like i didn't vote for him mm -hmm. and then in in the hhj song he says like hope is for presidents and yeah. people when they're dreaming yeah or, and dreams are for people when they're sleeping yeah that's and good. it's like i i saw that connection kind of right away and i was like that's interesting they're both talking about like obama essentially mm -hmm. and like kind of the dissatisfaction with and social issues yeah and, yeah and social issues and like you know just like you know either being poor or you know the differences in like um you know, uh, orientation, kind of like that stuff. Like, it, it's just like, it's all, it's all in there in, in a coming from different perspectives, but almost sharing the same message at, yeah. at certain points. At certain points. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. Cool. So yeah, that's uh lasers and knife man. And, uh, yeah. So both weapons knife. And yeah. Laser. And laser, I guess so. So there's another connection right there. Right and and what, the... what does laser stands for? It's like love always shines. shines. Everyone remember to smile. Yeah. 
Yeah, yep. great, great acronym. Acronym. Love yep. it. Yep. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, peace. Later.